Hello, good day. Welcome back to Go on the Run. And today I want to continue with ingress controllers because um, there's some things that um, I didn't get to show in the first one because I want to keep the video short. So I show you how to create an ingress to route traffic to um, our service. And so today I'm going to show you how you can have multiple ingress um, defined that can route traffic to multiple different services. And I'm also just going to show you a problem that I encountered and I haven't come up with a solution yet. Um, I've done some research online and it looked like if the things that I found should solve the problem, but it didn't work for me. Um, and I'll tell you what I think at the end, but at least I want to show you just in case you run into those problems, you're not really stuck or get frustrated. You sort of know what to expect. All right. So um, let's just jump in. And just as a recap, just in case you did not create your cluster uh, correctly, remember that you're going to create your cluster with three agent, one server, and you're going to map a port. You're going to bind port 8081, for example, to port 80 of your load balancer because your load balancer, which I told you come with K3D, is running on port 80. Um, it's the traffic load balancer, and we're going to say that we want to bind to that. And so you're going to get our cluster going. The only other thing is if you remember, if we do Dogger, Image, LS, and then I do a grep for, um, I think we call our stuff um, a service, I believe, um, is what we call it. And so, yeah, we add something service, Stripeversity, using that KDS, and I tag it as a service. So I'm going to do K3D, Image, and then I'm going to do Import, and I'm going to do um, Stripeversity. And then this guy, I'm going to pour that into our cluster so we're going to be able to use it. So while that's happening, um, what I want to do is, of course, um, start with um, where we left off. And so if I do ls in this directory, we'll see that how we have ingress part two is where we sort of left off. And so what I'm going to do is cp minus r. And if I paste this, and then now I'm going to call it. Um, you know, ingress part three for chapter 10, uh, this networking stuff. So I'll just call it part three, but I'll leave it as ingress. And so we'll do that. And let me change to this directory um, part three here, ingress part three. Let's do that. And so what do we have in this directory? So we have, you know, our service file, our deployment file, our ingress file. But I'm I want to make a small change to our application. And the reason I want to do make a small change to your application is so we can sort of illustrate the problem that I'm talking about. Um, well, I'm going to show you, which has to do with when you request, make a request path, what happened, what gets forwarded to our application. This is going to make more sense, trust me, um, as we go through. So let's just think. So we're, um, where's our application? Um, that we want to copy. Well, I think the last application that we actually worked on, uh, let me see if it's here in our group directory here. So if I do ls here, um, no, ls, that, that. Um, so it's going to be up one directory. Oh, and look at there's a, our gold file. So let me copy this, um, all this code that's up there. So before I copy the file though, because there is a deployment file there that I don't know what's in there. I may not want to keep, but I want the Docker file and the Go file and all this other stuff. So what I'll do is I'll make a directory call mkdir. I know what is going to help is if I have my VS code up and running and you guys could kind of see what's going on. So um, let's do this. Let me clean up my screen a little bit. Um, say mkdir and I'll make a directory call k s I'm going to move everything, all the YAML files into KHS, right, like that. And then now I can copy, and I'm going to copy uh, everything from here and, you know, part one, services part one. Oh, why did I think? Services part one, everything to this directory. But remember, I don't want this a service file because I already have one in my KHS directory. Okay, hopefully you followed. All I did is went back and grabbed our application. So if I go here now, and say I'm going to work on our application. Remember, our application shows this message that says API service on whatever port at whatever time, right? Um, uh, maybe you could say on this host. Um, okay, let's do it. 
got requests um, for data saving V yeah, on API server. Get the API server there at this time. So I'm still missing one thing. I'm missing the request. So the request is, let's just do this. Thing is too long. So the first thing I need to do is the request so R that URL and we can do remote requ request URI. That's the thing. So this should read got request, whatever. So the request URI is going to be like the forward slash, slash, whatever. And then we'll see on which host, which means on which in which pod we're running that, that landed on. So we can see when we're, you know, load balancing, right? I want to do one other thing. I want to have a version number. So let's go up here and let's do um, version number. So if I pass into my application var um, app version, it's a string and I can do, actually I can say app version is get e environment and let's just do version as the thing that we're gonna pass in, okay? And then here I can say, if you know app version is equal it's just an empty string then app version is equals to 1.0 or 0.0.1 let's just do something like that okay so if no version is passing i'm going to just say that that's our version so uh, maybe i can say on api server blah, 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 version percent v at whatever and so i need to pass in the version number here app version and so there we go. So that's sort of like what it looks like. If we go to do a test of our application, what we can do is let's say run our app. So go my, go run, and then this should be run our app. We should be listening. And then if I go here and I do curl minus v, for example, and I do local host colon eighty eighty, I think is the port we're listening on. Um, this should work and you can see got request from slash on API server version 0.0.1 .0 at that time. And then if I do um, slash API, for example, we will see that oh, this is the URI. So whatever I requested after the port, that's the request URI, right? And those are like the endpoints you could think of it or the handlers. But because we only have one handler, well, it makes sense that oh, for any slash star, that star, it's or one handler is going to get called. So other stuff, let's call it books, for example. So that's going to get called. So we can see in our log message what exactly we're getting called on. Okay, good. All right. So that seems to work. Um, of course, if I, the version, if I want to change the version number, I can do it like this. I can say, um, you know, app version, because that's what it's looking at for version is equals to v1.0 v0.0.2 for example and if i run this like this now and then i do a request again we should see it all we get in version 0.0.2 so let's do bill for application so we go docker um, build because diversity um, slash um, using k8s i think is what i call it dash a server and i'm gonna call, I'm gonna call it version 0, 0 0.0.2 so i'm gonna tag it this time with a version number as opposed to before i was tagging it with asrv which means i was putting this after the colon so the colon there is like the tag and to understand what i mean when i say that oh i need to say which directory and so here and to understand what I mean by that is if I do this and I do cleanup and I do docker image list and I do um, head minus, let's do three, um, uh, image list minus three. You'll see that it has the repository and then it has image ID, which is this number and when it was created, size and the tag. And the tag is that version sort of. Whereas before what I was doing is if we do that and I do um, grep um, a serve, you'll see the difference. The difference here is this was the sort of repository, and then ASRV is how I was tagging it, which I know better, but I was just being lazy. So I figure once we're doing this now, I should correct that. Import our image, right? K3D, 
and image import. And the last one we import was this guy. But no, now we need to import SRV colon version 0 that 0 that. And so let's import that. Um, what did I do? Let's see, make sure I spell that correctly. So Stripe Versity. Okay, of course I didn't spell it correctly. I'm going to use the image ID to remove it. Docker IMG RM. And let's do that. And so delete it. Let me do Docker Bill. And let me spell it correctly this time. No, this seems correct. Oh, man. oh, I'm not in the correct directory. Okay, so I need to get into this directory. And then now let's try and build again. And then do K3D, import. And this time, this should be correct. Hopefully, you don't get all these errors that I'm, I'm having. Okay, so that's important. Importing. Not important. All right. So if I go now to my deployment, is the first thing I want to start with. So I'm not going to change the image yet. So I'm not going to change the image we're pulling because remember, this image is still available within our cluster. We have two of them. This is the old one and then uh, the new one. So if we run, and I'm going to change this to one, you know, just have one replica. And then we have a service defined for this. Okay, you mentioned that service name, and we have an ingress. The only thing I'm going to go change is I'm going to change this from, let's say, a service, a service to a service one. That's the only thing I'm going to change. So we'll change this to a service one. So ASRV one. I still pull in the same image and then on, on the, the service file here, I'm going to change this to ASRV1. And then for our ingress, of course, the thing that is trying to reach, again, I can change the ingress to if I want, but the thing is ASRV1. So that's where what it's trying to reach. The ingress, I don't have to give it this name. I can leave the, the ingress name as whatever I want. Um, the label and all this other stuff, we could be again anything I want. The only thing that's important here to, to match up is the service that it's going to try and reference. And so now we're saying try and reach a service using the slash path, all that stuff I explained. Before we continue, if we go to the Kubernetes documentation and we go to um, documentation, concept, and then service load balancing and networking. And we scroll down, we went to ingress before, we read this about what an ingress is. And then there's this picture here that shows like, you know, the client hit the ingress managed load balancer, then it hit your ingress, and then that ingress define a routing rule that you use to find the service. So that is what's happening here. This is that rule, which we can see they're rules, which means they could be multiple rules. And so we have this one. So let's just run this and have it created, and then we can start fooling around. So I'm going to do kubectl apply, and I'll do minus f, and I'll do khs directory and you know everything in that directory. And so now this should successfully create our ingress, and we can test this out by saying curl minus v, and actually we already have this thing running here. So I believe our ingress, the path was what? Slash, yep, the slash was just slash. So if we run this, we should see that it's running. And this is our old application, of course, because that's the one we did not modify. All right, so let's now go and add a, another rule so we can get to a, another service. And so for that, I'm going to instead add a, another service and so we can you know, reach and deploy another service and deployment. So let me just clean up everything, make sure everything is cleaned up. So I'll do apply, I'll just do delete instead. And so that should clean up everything. And I'm going to rename all of these files. So deployment two, I want to make sure I'm editing the correct file. Again, I'm going to change this to deployment two, so version two. And this is the one where I want to use our new um, thing. So this is going to be this. And then, like we say, it's going to be version zero, that's zero, that two. 
Now, if I leave it and don't specify a, an environmental variable, it's going to actually print out that oh, it's version 1, right? So I don't want that. So I actually want to use the environment. So I'm going to say env. And if I do that, it says a list of environment variables to set. And you know, notice it has these things. It has name and the name of the environment variable and then the value. And the name is what? Version. That's the name of an environmental variable. And the value is, let's just call it v v 0, .0, 0. That's my environmental variable that I'm going to pass to this service. And then for the service, let's um, copy that, paste it. And this is going to be service2. I should call this a app instead of a service because it's getting confusing. All right, so let's modify. Why is this an error? One or more containers do not have resource limit. Incorrect type array. Oh, array. This is supposed to be an array. So um, there you go. So that's one entry. So the service for this, uh, again, we want to be able to create a service that points to our second service. And the ports could be the same. It doesn't matter because they're running. Remember, each service gets its own IP address, so that the port number doesn't matter. And we certainly have deployment, different deployments, right? There's two different deployments. This deployment is using this image. The other deployment is using our older image. So what about our ingress, though? Um, so first of all, let's get everything up and running. I'm going to clean up, and I'm going to say kubectl apply. And we want to apply everything in that directory. And notice it's up and running. We have two services running, they're different IP, they're on different ports, and we're still going to have the endpoint forward slash that's pointing to our whole service. So let's start a another um, while loop going here. And this time, we're going to be accessing, let's say, service2. And this at this point, this is forward slash is also matching. So that's why we see it going to this. And if instead what I do is clone this because I have multiple paths in my ingress and I clone this like this and I say I have yet another pass service two and this guy the path for this should be service one so now service one goes to our older version service one and then this guy goes to service two now if we let's see if we can get it to update kubectl apply and it configured it and notice what happened. We're getting our second um, service at forward slash server two. We're not reaching our first service because we're still looking at forward slash and there's nothing there. So we need this to be service one. And now you can see we do have two different ingress, which makes sense, right? We have two different services on the same port where we're using the paths to route them to different things. So what is the problem then? Well, let me go um, create yet another deployment and service. Well, I can actually, I don't even need a new deployment file. What I'll do is since we can have multiple containers running in a pod, let me just add uh, nginx container to this pod and then I say that oh this name of this is nginx and this is the image within that and the name of that container sorry and then the image is nginx and then I'm not going to worry with environmental variable for nginx I don't know if it uses any but that's right and the port for nginx is 8080 so now I have two containers within that one deployment and so if we we run this again, it looked like the service, so we should have two containers running. That's fine. Uh, we don't see that from outside. What about um, our service? Our service, we have multiple ports. We can map port 80, 80 to port 80 inside a container. Remember, we can have multiple ports. So let's do that. Map port 80, 80 to port 80, 80, port 80 to port 80. So Again, that's just revealing it externally on the service, okay? And you can name each port, but I'm not doing any of that. Oh, now it's telling me that since I have more than one port, I should give it names. Well, I said I wasn't going to do it, but okay, fine, I have to give it names. So I'll say this is name is our 
app server port a server this second port is um, name colon or engine export all right cool so hopefully this clears up and yep we updated it and now we can see service two we have two ports exposed great how do we access them let's go to our ing ingress again at this time i'm going to add third path or rule and so this time i'm going to call it i don't know service three if we like or we can call it nginx if we like and so it's still going to service two remember that but now it's hitting port 80. and so once again let's update and we can see it how our ingress was configured and that's fine well let me instead change this guy at the top here um because we're not we know that first one is working so let's change this guy to say engine x and now notice what's happening it's saying 4040 you know not phone page not phone essentially so why would it say page not phone engine x is running on port um 80. and so to see what's going on if you notice for ours when we call this path here slash server 2 it is actually passed through to our application it's passed right through the requesting um url that we passed our um ingress is actually passed through and i noticed because let's just go zoom in here i'm clean up and we can do kubectl logs minus f and I'm going to say, what do I want to, the logs I want to follow? I want to follow the logs for a pod in the service two, right? So we can say service two, essentially. So service two, and there we go. And then which one of the pods we want to follow? We want to follow the Nginx one. And so if I do this, you can see, so let me just show you that all this is refreshing. You can see that, and let's control C to stop it. You can see that our Nginx got a request from localhost 8080, and the request is a get on slash Nginx. So Nginx doesn't really know what slash Nginx is because Nginx is listening on the root forward slash. So it doesn't know how to route to this endpoint slash Nginx. So what is happening, which we've already confirmed and saw is that whatever path you put on in your ingress that's getting passed right on through to the backend back end service and you may not want that so i can just simply change things maybe let me see if i just make this slash i was going to take out everything and so if i do this and i do qctl apply and instead of looking at nginx i did forward slash right notice how it works now we can successfully reach the Nginx page. It's no, we're not getting page not found because Nginx know how to return something that you, when you requested a slash. And why did I say that that's a problem? Well, it's not really quite a problem in itself because there are some annotations you can pass to your um, ingress controller to say, I want you to strip away the um path and just pass like you know forward slash or something like that so for example you can say um annotations and there are many annotations so let's go back here and so if you scroll down you'll see that how remember we talk about the ingress and the ingress controller and there are many ingress controllers right and so if we go and you can see ingress nginx is one plus ingress controller but there are many more and if we scroll down here, you see additional controllers and, you know, there are a bunch of them. Uh, but the one that we're using is this one, Traffic, which I mentioned before. So if we go to, let's say here, and you go, I don't know, if you go to Google and then you do Nginx annotation. So as you can see, I was searching for rewriting target does not work. And the reason why I was searching for that because I couldn't understand why when I put this annotation that says Ingress Kubernetes IO rewrite target, which is supposed to rewrite the path. So let's try it, copy it and I'll show you the problem. So rewrite target, which means rewrite what you send into the target service to just slash. And so that means that even when you match on slash service two, it should still just call it as slash. 
Um, so again, if I put this back as Nginx and I configure this annotation, my expectation to control C, clean up, my expectation is that, my expectation is that, no, notice everything is broken at this point. My expectation is that when I do Nginx, it should work, but it's still not working because if I go to the logs for Nginx, I can see that, oh, oh, it's not even getting called. I know it's not getting called because if I press enter, even though this is in a loop here, it's still not getting called. We can see it always, it's calling. So somehow this messes up the routing so that, oh, it's, it's just everything just stopped working. Um, so that's one of the problems. Now, there's one other thing. Maybe the reason this is not working is because this says the ingress class is Nginx when in fact we're using traffic, right? So that might be the reason why it's not working. So I've tried a number of things and I cannot get this to work. I cannot get it where you can pass in slash because it means then that all your service always get the requested path as opposed to the thing after it. And, I'm, and I know that's probably by design for certain things, but um, I wish it would work. And so here, things are not as broken as before, but notice Nginx still is not working when I call forward slash Nginx. It's still um, not passing the slash. And, and that's because Nginx itself doesn't know what this path is, and it's passing through the path complete request path, even though I tell it that oh, it should rewrite the target, and I change the ingress class to Trophy. Um, there's some other things that I've tried, but none of it seems to work. So I wanted to point that out to you, that if you define a serve, uh, ingress, and you know that oh, your service that is listening, you have to take into account that the path that it's going to be called with it's going to be the path in which your routing rule is using. Does that make sense? That is the problem. The problem is that now I have to write my application. If I was writing multiple handlers within my application here, I couldn't just say, it, oh, listening to forward slash. Let's say I actually wanted to listen to post like that, and I had another handler listening to, I oh, don't know. So I had a post handler, for example, post, right? And I had another handler called, I oh, don't know, comments or something and my comments handler was going to be i don't know comments and then i actually had a handler defined for it to just say yeah i'm not going to save any of this because let's just say that's what i had something like that what i mean is that if i were to deploy my application and put it at some route which where the ingress was you know forward slash awesome app or my book app or whatever, it wouldn't get routed. Like my application wouldn't get called. Those handlers wouldn't get called because they're looking for slash slash post, which they need to look for is sort of slash, let's say service two or whatever that route that I'm using, that rule I'm using for my ingress. And that is not what you would want to do because that, that ties you down. You have to build your application to say exactly what the rule is and I think and that's bad so that's why there's these ways for the ingress to have annotation to tell it not to work that way but I cannot get it to work one of the things I want to say before I end it because this video is way too long I hopefully I illustrate the problem that the problem seems to be that if you're going to use a path for your routing rule you must include that in your application and that seems to be bad especially using K3D so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try using a different cluster. I'm going to use Minikube cluster. I'm going to use a kind cluster and see if they still have this problem after I run the files on change. If that works, I'll make a video showing that oh, that solved the problem. And maybe we don't need to worry about it because in the real world, when you do deploy, you're not going to deploy in K3D. You're going to deploy K3D is nice, and develop, nice for development, but you're going to be deploying on a cluster that's either created or hosted in the cloud or your environment, your company, you know, DevOps team maintained. So you shouldn't run into an issue like this. I just wanted to show you in case you're playing around and you hit this problem. I'm going to end it here. Um, but before I go, if you made it this far, um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing, uh, especially if you like the material. For those who have already subscribed, thank you for sticking and coming back. And thumbs up the video, um, give it a like. Um, if, if you don't agree with anything, please leave constructive feedback and um, questions or concerns. 
but nothing mean, don't need to go there. And take care, see you, stay safe, see you in the next video. Alright, bye.